And here are the solutions to the exercises from Chapter 2. How did you go? Well, let's look at the solutions. Let's start with the first of the two exercises. I've called the script read details. R-E-A-D-D-E-T-A-I-L-S. So I just type that by itself and it prompts me for my name. So I'll type in the name, Mark Virtue. Please enter your address. Well, whatever. And finally a phone number. Okay, thank you. The details have been stored in the file details.out. Okay, well let's have a look at that file. Cat details dot out and there are the details as promised. So now that we've proven that the script actually works, let's go and have a look at the code. So we'll have a look at vi what's it called? Read details. Okay, notice that first of all we have a comment. First the user's name. So now I say echo, please enter your name, which is fairly straightforward, but I've put double quotes around the entire echo string, and the main reason that I've done that is so that I can get a little space happening just immediately after the colon, and also this backslash C, which means don't put a new line on the end of this line. So the cursor will remain flashing at the end of the line where I can enter my name. Those are the reasons that I've put double quotes around the echo string. And the next line is fairly straightforward, read name, and then it does the following, echo, and then it does an echo, it does an echo of the word name, and then the contents of the variable called name. Now here's the clever part, I have redirected the output of the echo command to store the output in the file called details.out. How did you go with that bit? It's not that hard, but uh, if you'd never seen it before, you may have had trouble with that bit. Now we do exactly the same thing again for the address. There's only one subtle difference, and that is right here, instead of using the greater than sign, I've used a double greater than sign because I want to append the echoes output to the file called details.out. I want it to go onto the end of the file. I do not want it to overwrite the contents of the file. And then again, exactly the same thing with the user's phone number. Now finally, display the message about the file name. And now this is all very straightforward, it's just a regular echo. But there's one clever little thing at the end, I want to have the actual quotes come out on the screen. Now the quotes won't come out by themselves. If I put regular quotes in there, then the shell will just remove them, treating them as special characters. So I actually have to make them not special to the shell, and the simplest way for me to do that is to put a backslash in front of each one. So there's a backslash double quotes and then there's another backslash double quotes right there. And of course that serves the purpose. Now the second exercise, I've stored the solution in a script called counts. So I'll run counts now. And there are the details on this system. And yes, there are in fact 16,169 possible users that could be logged into the system. Currently only 48 of them are logged in, and those 48 people are running 207 processes. Notice that the output is all nicely aligned ac across the right margin. So let's look at the secrets to all of that in the file called counts. Again, we've got comments. Now here we say we've got uh, a comment describes that all the users are find found in a file called slash tetra slash password so I cat the contents of a tetra password and I pipe them to wc minus l. Now wc is the word count program and it will actually if you invoke it with no parameters whatsoever it will display three different numbers on the screen the number of lines words and characters in the input but I only want the number of lines. I only want the number of lines in that file which will give me the number of users on the system so I use the minus L option which says just the number of lines. Now the way I got all of that information to appear on the end of the previous line is again just like I did before with the echo I put quotes around it and I put a little backslash C on the end of the line meaning don't enter a new line so that the output of the next command will appear on the end of this line and I use the same technique for all three. 
Now again, the number of users logged onto the system, that's a very simple one, that's just the who command and then again send the results wc-l. Finally, the number of running processes, well on this version of Unix you can obtain that by doing a ps-e, it might be a different command line option for ps on your system, but it's minus e on this system, e for everything. And again, the same thing, now I've put a few little extra spaces in here. And the reason that I've done that is so that I get the output all nicely aligned, so that that backslash c, that backslash c, and that backslash c are all lined up underneath each other, which means that the results of the wc-l will also appear in exactly the same column position. So the same technique is used for all three. It's just three different commands, cat of etc. password, who, and then a ps-e, and each one gets piped to wc-l, and stuck on the end of the previous echo. And that's about it. How did you go? Did you get those out? Well, those were not particularly simple scripts to start with. I wanted to cover a great deal of techniques in just two little scripts. I could have posed a question saying, please write a script that displays the day's date and does an ls of a particular directory and so on, but that would have been too easy, and I think everybody would have known how to do that. So don't worry, I'm not going to make all the exercises at the end of each chapter quite so difficult. Okay, that's it, let's move on to the next chapter.